If you ever wondered why the last vlog's topic was so important, look no further. As you can see, it's not exactly my best session in the water, and following on from the last vlog about how I hate my pop-up, you can see why. Okay, so it's about time I had a crack at the backhand barrel setting, got learning something new. Where to start? What techniques and concepts to even start thinking about? And how did it go? Want to see how my first efforts were? And what a session defined as perseverance and humble pie looks like? Then you're going to like this vlog. I'm James Davis, and I've been a skydiver for over 20 years, jumping and competing all around the world. In the last 18 months, I've been surfing at the wave pool in Bristol to see if wave pools can do for surfing what wind tunnels did for skydiving. I wanted to see what would happen if an average surfer trained at the wave pool for a year, if they could learn to get barreled, sharing all the mistakes, learning points and experiences along the way. As ever, where do you even start when trying to learn something new? What information is both credible, useful and accessible to the normal person? And how do you avoid getting bad habits from the start that are so difficult to undo? A quick internet search on the topic of backhand barrel riding and you can actually find a couple of the greats, such as Andy Irons and Jamie O'Brien talking about the specific topic, backhand barrel riding. What better people could there be to listen to and get some key points from? There is also a super useful written interview with Bruce Irons on Stab about the topic. I can't find it now, but somewhere on the internet there is a video with Bruce Irons sitting on the couch explaining how the position is similar to curling up comfortably on a sofa. All the links to the videos mentioned in the description below. So is backhand barrel riding super simple and easy to implement? You have to be joking. As per the last vlog about how I hate my pop-up and all the issues associated with it, one person shared a really valid point, which is that the takeoff can all be about confidence. Anyone who's had a bad session at the wave pool will understand how a few bad waves can get in your head. It's also more evidence that having a fundamentally sound pop-up is so important. Pressing the reset button during the session is really hard and it requires a lot of perseverance and resilience. As you can see here, both my board and ego got a good pounding, but it wasn't all bad. One of the best things about the wave pool is being able to watch good people in real time. This is Barnaby Cox, one of the UK's up and coming talents. If you watch a couple of his waves, you'll see all the techniques and body positions that the greats like Andy Irons and J.O.B. are talking about. Seeing someone pig dogging and using their knee to slow down in real time was amazing and super useful. So here are some of my waves. As you can see, I look all over the place and struggling just to get the basics down. But I guess that's totally to be expected with the first attempt. Once again, having video to look at and analyze is priceless, as video just doesn't lie. JOB has some funny scenes showing some things not to do on top of what to do, but it certainly seems there is some room for improvement in my power riding once I've repaired my nose and head back into for another session. I'm also going to get some more video analysis from a good coach, which is specific to me, because that's far better than trying to work it out myself. But if anyone has some useful input, then please shout and comment below, because I'm all ears and it's all about sharing for everyone. In the next vlog, I'm going to get back to the wave to see how all the pop-up land exercises such as push-ups, burpees and yoga ball drills have helped. I think I might just have to avoid the backhand barrel setting to try the new takeoff advice. Until the next time, enjoy your surfing wherever that is.